as Ben said, my name is Dr. Rosie Everett. Again, I'm not a poet, and I will profess to be trying poetry as a teenager and a learning young adult and being very unsuccessful at it. So I will not talk about my poetry today, but what I am here to talk about is the work that Ben and I have been working on uh, on several projects. So we have put up the slide. So it started with the Wet Futures project, which was a multidisciplinary, multinational assessment of peatland archaeology across Europe and how we address some of the key questions in the preservation of peatland archaeology as we um, walk through some of the challenges that we have at the moment around climate change and uh, uh, human intervention in uh, society. Moving more uh, into sort of current projects, the Irish peatland archaeology across time, I can never remember the acronym, <coughs> IPEAT, um, has, just <laughs> has just started, which is part of the Irish Research Council. And really what Ben and I have been trying to champion over the last few years is how do we integrate some of the cultural conversations around peatlands. As we are all aware, peatlands, this is a trigger warning. Um, so trigger warning for bog bodies. We all know that peatlands hold a very strong cultural identity across mainly Northwest Europe, but in other parts of the world as well. And the way in which we discuss peatland heritage and peatland archaeology and how we protect it has often been around the the, the cultural heritage, bog bodies, everybody knows bog bodies, everyone is faintly obsessed with bog bodies, and we wanted to change that narrative. Not quite successfully yet, but we're getting there, we're getting there. We were at COP26 last year and COP27 last uh, this year, and we were able to talk about some of the challenges that we have as, as peatland archaeologists around the way in which these sites are managed, the way in which the archaeology is managed, and how we then translate that into a conversation with everybody else. Because if peatland archaeologists sit around and talk to each other for the rest of our lives, nothing will get protected and nothing will happen and peatland will, will be, continue to be destroyed and we will just be standing on our soapboxes shouting at each other. So how do we engage it? How do we get that conversation off the ground that is beyond us? So we've, you know, lots of pubs, lots of sitting around chatting about this. And, you know, one of the things that comes up regularly is the use of poetry. And it's thanks to this man here. Everybody know who he is? Are we gonna... Yes, Seamus Heaney, of course, the man who talks about bogs in all of his wonderful poetry. And his poetry is great, but it's challenging. And it's just one man talking about peelings. And no offense, but it's time to kind of change that narrative. So. We kind of scratched our heads, Ben and I, about how we were going to do this. We tried to write poetry, and let me tell you, that's, <laughs> that was not going to, to, to solve this process. So um, we got in contact with this amazing woman. <laughs> yes, you can. So everyone, this is Anne-Marie. She is the, um, a burgeoning Irish poet. She has recently been nominated for, let me get this right, the Irish Times New Poetry of 2022 Award. Is that the title? Great. Um, for her latest publication, um, Blood Root. Yes. Poison Glen. Poison Glen. Poison it's on the next slide. It's on the next slide. Great. Thank you. Chaotic. Um, and I just wanted to. Before, uh, there's no point me banging on about how amazing she is because she has written us a poem about bogs. And we have commissioned this piece, and it is a reflection of some of the challenges and the relationships we're in Irish society with um, peatlands, and how we can bring that into the conversation outside of the world of Seamus Heaney. And um, before I finish, um, I'm sorry, I've done a bit of googling. So, Anne Marie, in 2017, you said, I believe poetry has the potential to unbury us and restore us back into the landscapes to which we truly belong. And I think for our work around peelands, nothing is more succinct than that, that one line about how do we bring that conversation back into, into, the, you know, into the wider society. So, Anne-Marie, would, like <laughs> would you like to start? So, Anne-Marie, do you want to talk about the poem and then do a boom? Do you? Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> 
morning, everyone. This is actually my very first academic conference. So you'll have to excuse me if I'm talking in kind of layman poetry terms and anecdotes. Um, I'm actually looking at your conference title there, uh, Revolutions, and uh, Joyce has this lovely quote, which I really enjoyed, all poetry is an act of revolt <laughs> against actuality. <laughs> Are you okay? Um, and maybe that's something that we have in common, maybe uh, scholarly and academic research is a kind of type of revolt too, so maybe we have that common ground. Um, that we share. Um, so I, it's my pleasure to have the space with you this morning to talk about uh, poetry and boglands. Um, I myself grew up in the Gaeltacht boglands of northwest Donegal on a place known as Crocknanu, which translates from the Gaelic as Hill of the Saints. And it's so called because it's a site associated with Saint Colum Kill, who met with his three bodies and they argued it out there about who would convert the local area from Christianity. Um, and it's a story that remains very popular in Donegal today because I suppose it has all these ingredients of uh, strong characters, um, you know, the divine intervention of God and and conflict. And it's a story that's kind of been with me through all of my poetry practice. And I think when I, you know, remember that bog hill that I grew up in, um, I remember, you know, the dark bleed of the horizon and the birds rising. Bog wants to carry the human voice. And I remember that I grew up literally in the shadow of these uh, mythical men who wanted to conquer the landscape and the wildness around them. And, you know, as a teenager, my bedroom, for most of my childhood, my bedroom window was a view out onto this bogland site. Um, and even though I was looking out onto a site which is overwritten with Christian narrative, I also under understood that it was a site with the scent of something much older existing there as well. And I suppose I, there was a kind of dramatic turn of events when I was around 17, where overnight the local Catholic church came onto the site and they erected this towering uh, cross and an altar and a pilgrim path. And they kind of took over the Bogland site officially. And so the poem that I have written as part of this commission draws upon those particular events. And it's dedicated to my own uh, goddaughter and uh, just thinking about a recent walk that we had on that Bogland site. Mm -hmm. 